All right, I want to talk real quick, very short section. Almost left this out, but I thought, yeah, I better talk about it because I think it kind of makes sense. And I want you to at least hear it. What are the ramifications of a sexual harassment within a real estate brokerage? Obviously, any sexual harassment anywhere brings unwanted attention, not just real estate brokerages, but in any any business. But since we are in the business of real estate, let's talk about that it can bring unwanted attention to your brokerage. You don't want a news reporter down at your office asking about the sexual harassment case. Not to mention, it could also bring about a bad reputation. If something happens and there's continually uh, cases being filed of, with management and the agents, eventually the word's going to get out and all the other agents are going to go, I don't want to work for so-and-so. I hear he harass harasses all the women he hires, all right, or all the men he hires, anything. And obviously there are fines that can be associated. We just talked about uh, the potential maximum fines, 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, don't necessarily want to pay that fine, if nothing else. Clients could stop using your brokerage. If they hear through the grapevine that that real estate brokerage has a lot of internal issues with sexual harassment, that could be a problem. Now, here's the bad thing. I'm old enough to remember those 7-Up commercials where they were talking about, you know, uh, what was it, the, the image. I'm here to tell you, perception is reality, all right? You may not even have a sexual harassment case filed, but if, there are, if you're making unwanted gestures to all your female agents and they start talking and there becomes a perception that you are that type of person, that could still hurt you inside of other uh, agents wanting to come to your company or other clients. So just remember, you could harm other people outside of your brokerage. You could make mortgage companies not want to deal with you. You could make title companies not want to deal with you. All right? So what I'm telling you is if you are a managing broker, you probably should have or include a sexual harassment section in your company's policies and procedures manual. I'm sure you guys all have one, right? At least the policies and procedures manual. You might want to have a, a section about sexual harassment. I would also talk about consensual relationships in there. Is it legal? If it is legal or is it allowable? It's not legal. That's a bad word because it is legal. Um, is it allowable and how do you define it and how do you define a termination and things like that. So I would suggest that you have that in your um, policies and procedures manual as well. Now I realize that was just a one slide section and I probably would assume that everybody should understand that the ramifications are bad, dude. And I don't care, you know, whether it's sexual harassment, and I'm going to go ahead and just throw this in right now, even though we're talking about sexual harassment, anything, you know, rumors, you know, hey, he's stealing earnest money. Hey, he gives preference to his buyers over other buyers. All of those things are going to be bad for you. This is going to be even worse, all right? So just do the right thing. That's what I'm trying to tell you.